welcome to Belgium and the traditional town of Spa. It's a place that still breathes the history that started in the Middle Ages. It was the local healing mineral springs that brought worldwide fame here and Spa is now eponymous with any place having a natural water source. Mineral water, also known around the world as Spa water, thanks to the Spa brand. The bourgeoisie built their castles in this area. Crowned head of states lived here. It was the city of the Ardennes. Next to Spa is the town of Stavelo and many smaller villages. One of these villages gives its name to the world famous racetrack, which this weekend plays host to the Hankook 24 hours of Spa Francorchamps. We're here at the circuit Spa Francorchamps for the final race of our European season 2018, the Hankook 12 hour Spa Francorchamps. We're happy to have almost 60 cars on the grid, uh, a lot of uh, GT cars together with the TCE division. Um, we have many classes, we expect a good battle in both this race but also for the European Championship. Here is where the decisions are going to be made. The weekend starts on Friday with qualifying. The 51 Mark Cars Australia is the first out, closely followed by the Herbert Motorsport number 911 Porsche, both making the most of the 30 minutes allotted for this session. Many drivers will tell you qualifying in an endurance race really doesn't mean anything. However, there is some importance if you finish as class leader. For the qualification, of course, we're trying to, to get pole. Yeah, that, that's the goal, but yeah, we're trying to, to start in front. Uh, more in front is, is better, even for the start, because it's yeah it's going to be busy in the first couple of corners. So, yeah, no no big expectations. Just yeah, we need to do a do a job, and then uh, we will see what happens. Not all of the cars are on the track. The EB Mortis machine is in the pits without an engine, and there's no one working on it. One of the entries that is on track in the qualifying is the number 209 Quick VR Racing Mark M2. Smoke from that car forcing it to return to the pits. Two or three test practices without any issues and uh, in the qualification we have another driver in the car who tells us something goes wrong, he loses power so he come, came in, seems we lose a lot of oil and then we start to look with cameras inside the engine block and see uh, it, uh, the piston is burned so uh, it was finished for us. The team were already rebuilding the spare engine, so there was no other spare to put in the car. We drive complete season and without any issues with the engine, but it seems like all the three MR cars has this weekend some uh, big problems with the engines. So we need to find out what goes wrong. But most teams did set a qualification time. Yeah, it was really tight, also with a lot of traffic for, and, and for sure we I think uh, I didn't uh, all my best, but I think it was the same also for uh, all the other cars. Uh, at the end, we, we were P3. Championship points are awarded in each class. That means each of the categories has their own pole sitter. Paul in GT4 goes to QSR Racing School. We managed to get pole position, so better than that is uh, <laughs> very difficult. Another class pole sitter, the number 56 Fambello Porsche 991. Yeah, qualification was, was good, but yeah, we need to remember we have 12 hours of racing to go. So yeah, a lot of things can happen, but yeah, good starting position for the race. Pro Sporting sets its fastest lap just 0 0.012 seconds ahead of the number 11 Ferrari. This is good news for the team. They're in the running for the season championship. Adam Christodoulou comes in and joins the crew on the pit wall to see if they can stay ahead of the competition. The number 11 Ferrari and the 34 team could still claim the season championship. The last lap of qualifying, all eyes are focused on those cars as Lance David Arnold in the number 16 SPS claims the fastest lap and takes pole position. The number 85 was bumped from pole position late on in Barcelona too. Yeah, it was so close, like bridesmaid again. So uh, yeah, we were on pole position, set for pole position. Uh, we only ran the one set of tyres. This was part of our strategy. Uh, everyone went out straight away. We went out after about 10 minutes, set the time. It was looking really good. And with literally 30 seconds to go, uh, the SPS car just pipped us by 13 thousandths of a second. So yeah, a bit frustrating not to be on the pole position, but uh, still, uh, we're starting on the front row. so. Should be good for tomorrow. Well, that's not going to be the case. The Bohemia Energy number no. 11 Ferrari had their fastest lap originally cancelled due to exceeding track limits. But video proved that wasn't the case. They got their time restored and they will start from second position. 
in qualifying we saw many changes of, uh, for the overall uh, pole but also for class pole positions so what we see is that today hopefully this is going to expand uh, throughout the fair but fast and uh, nice to wa watch race the weather is unusually good for october uh, especially here in spa but um, we're, we're really looking forward to this race the race is about to start as Lance David Arnold reflects on a perfect final lap in his qualifying session. We had a really good lap, everything was perfect, the car was great, so I could do it at the end, really completely at the end, so we are in the best position for the race. I mean, for the start it's not that easy to start next to a turbocharged engine car, because uh, you can take all the load for the, for the start from 60 up, but uh, let's see what happens. No qualifying time set. But the 73 EB Motors team are back on track. They had a broken engine and had to have one transported in from Italy overnight. In the night uh, in the Go Italy is uh, one one uh, new engine. In the morning uh, in the Go in the car is the, now the start in the in the, the near the grid. As the field head off on the formation laps, what are their expectations? Trying to survive the first couple of corners and then uh, we will see what happens. Trying to gain some positions or stay in the same position and uh, just do our thing. Uh, we, uh, we will try to stay on this position at the uh, first position so, and then uh, we are champion uh, of Europe <laughs> in GT4. <laughs> Oh, we expect a very good battle in all uh, GT classes and uh, it's going to be exciting for the overall uh, position but also for the European Season uh, Championship. All of the classes will have their decision today. On board the number 15 Mercedes AMG of Swiss team, through the bus stop, on the way to the main straight and except for the quick VR number 209, all the GT cars in A6, 991, SPX, SP4, and GT4 classes are about to start the Hankook 12 hours of Spa Francorchamps. Huge early battle for the lead, almost four cars across the track, but the drivers wisely choose to drop back into line before the first corner, but the 85 locks up. Oh, it was interesting, uh, you know, not the way we want to start a 12 hour. We had a uh, some sort of a glitch in the ABS, had a big lock up. Did everything I could to try and stay out of the guy's way and ended up spinning. Fortunately, everybody missed me. I had to do a, a power reset to get the ABS to come back, and it seems to be fine now. Fortunately, the other drivers avoided the Pro Sport number 85. Um, it's always fun to take the start. It's it's always a kind of build-up you have to, to make a perfect start. And um, I think I took a good start. I lost one place to the Audi. Um, but I think I took a good start. The corners at Eau Rouge and Radion speak to the imagination of all the drivers as they pass this area for the first of many times during the race. Also on track is the 24-hour touring car race and it doesn't take long before the first contender in that series is passed by the GT race leader Scuderia Praha. With two series running simultaneously, you are sometimes influenced by the issues in the other category. The stranded 139 BMW causes a code 60. That means everyone has to drive at 60 kilometers an hour. That allows the marshals to safely handle any issue on track. And once the marshals have cleared the incident, the race can resume. Cars get back to top speed quickly. The QSR Racing School Mercedes AMG goes from 60 to 190 kilometers in seconds, but then a wheel is on the grass. And I was uh, away a bit faster than the Audi, so I tried to overtook him on, uh, on the left side, on the outside of the turn. But he pushed me a little bit to the outside, so I should have braked or reduced my speed, but I, I kept my speed and I went with my left wheel in the grass and the car went to the right, into the barrier and uh, was out of control. Big crash, yeah. The first retirement of the race. The car is completely, completely gone for the race. We'll see afterwards how much uh, the damage is exactly. So, but we can't fix it now. The 56 Porsche qualified on pole in the 991 class, but it's parked at the side of the track. The Code 60 isn't helping them, but for the Pro Sport number 85, it was a blessing in disguise. We came in on the initial Code 60 to get fuel, and I could hear a noise. But I couldn't identify it. I got no vibration in the car or anything, just a noise. I made the guys aware of it. And uh, that was the long code 60 for the uh, crash up in the hill there. 
And um, so when I came in, they checked it, and sure enough, the, the nut had backed all the way out, and it was just on the safety part of the wheel. So we got really lucky there, because you wouldn't want to lose that in the right end. Alfred Renard in the number 911 Porsche is playing close attention to the flags and lights. As soon as it goes green, he manages to overtake a couple of cars within two corners. Still in the pits, Van Berlo Racing. They are dealing with cooling problems, perhaps due to the long code 60. No, race cars were not meant to be sitting in when you're going still. They get very uncomfortable. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's much, much nicer when you're at uh, race pace than in code 60. Enjoying his battle is Tony Fournay. Uh, Mercedes in the in the front of me after uh, some laps. I fight for for the leading, but uh, it's a long race. But it's, uh, every lap is to push the maximum. But uh, I, I try to overtake in the first one lap or two. He he blocks me everywhere and uh, change the strategy and uh, good my distance in the in the old rouge and, and fight for the, for the position in the final of the straight and he, he overtake him. As Tony's team Tony's is waiting, team for, him is waiting for, him for him to come in, we'll take a look at the standings we'll after two hours of racing. racing. The SPS Automotive Performance number 16 Mercedes AMG GT3 started from Paul and have held on to the lead at the end of the first two hours. They have less than an eight second lead to the number 33 from Car Collection, just coming into the pits. On the lead lap is the first A6 Pro entry, the number 11 Bohemia Energy Ferrari, third overall, and of course the A6 Pro class leader. The Prague based team has a lap over the number 15 Mercedes of AMG Swiss team. Another 30 seconds back in that class, the MP Motorsport entry, the number 19. In the 991 category, leading the class, the QSR number 94. EB Motor is 1 minute 55 seconds back in second. Third is the first of the Porsche Lorient entries, the number 64. This is endurance. An endurance race is obviously a sprint race is going as fast as you can, qualifying lap after qualifying lap. Endurance, there's a lot more strategy involved. You have to be a little bit more cautious around other cars, so we need to make sure no contacts, no damages, everything runs smoothly, and we're there at the end of the race. Uh, obviously for us, it's a big weekend as uh, we can wrap up the championship here. This is the final race of the 2018 season in the 24-hour GT Endurance Series powered by Hankook. We'll have to wait until the finish flag falls before we know who's claimed the championship of the European leg of this Creventic organised series. For the last two years, the GT Championship has been won by Swiss entrance Hoffer Racing. Well, this year we also come to collect the championship prize, but not for us, but for my uncle with the BMW, the number 131, I think, yeah. So now we're here for them, to cheer for them. And it's still the same team, the same family, so everything's good. The number 131 Hoffer Racing entry is running in the Touring Car Endurance Series, racing alongside the GTs here at Spa. And we have a show that will bring you all of the action from that series, and we'll find out if they will indeed collect the trophy. The GT race is a battle between a couple of teams, currently holding all the cards, Pro Sport. Well, we like our chances. You always rather come in a few points up than a few points down. It's not a sure thing one way or the other. Uh, the 11 car is still, you know, very much uh, in control of his destiny and the 34 car as well. So we're watching both those cars, but really we just have to concentrate on our race and try to do what we've all, you know, done all year long, do the same thing. And hopefully the, the championship comes out good for us. Pro Sport are currently not leading the race or their class. That gives an opportunity to the other championship hopefuls, Car Collection. They have no intention to hand the race to their competition. No, 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 we are coming for the championship. Not uh, to all our uh, places, no, only to win the championship. Pro Sport in ninth at the moment, Car Collection second. So currently, the Car Collection team have the championship lead. When I look on the team table, we are champion, but a lot of these things uh, are possible, so I don't know. But now we are champion, but we will, we will don't quiet, so we have a lot of work for us. Each class will have their own team champions, championships for drivers too, and Team Lorient Racing have their drivers in line for those awards. For drivers, he is number one, actually, in 991 championships. For pilots, and I, I am third. So I need to, to be 
with him, it's good because we are on the same car for this race, not in Barcelona. He was on car 64, but same team. That's that's good. I wish. And, uh, I wish. Perhaps you you finish second. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, it's a real pleasure. All the the team, all the year, had make a very very impressive work that the car had ever finished the race yes. and uh, it's for that reason that uh, the um, competitors uh, for our category are very uh, uh, far. In, far from us from us there's plenty to battle for when we left the action we were waiting for the number 33 audi to come into the pits and here he comes uh, just uh, in the entry in the in the change of driver i have an incident uh, when I entry, I turn to entry for the, for the pit box. Uh, one car he's started, don't see me, and your engineer, uh, he come on, and <laughs> I don't see me, I nothing, I not invisible. Uh, but okay, I have a little bit damage in the splitter, but I think not is a, not is a, not is a hard damage. But we'll see, we'll see in the, in the next laps. A quick repair, and the car collection Audi rejoins the track. Meanwhile, the race leader has also come in for a driver change and a fuel stop. This hands the lead for the moment to Car Collections number 34, battling for the championship. The FIA-sanctioned 24-hour GT Endurance Series, powered by Hankook, consists of a maximum of eight classes. Each class has their own podium and championship points, so you can never just look at the race leaders, but take into account the class leaders too. So let's keep an eye on the A6 Pro and AM class, the SPX runners, the Porsches in the 991 category, the GT4 class, and especially for this event, the SP4 category. The EB Motors number 73, sporting Italian colours, was leading the class, but after its pit stop, it's dropped to third, just 11 seconds behind the Porsche Lorient number 64. In the A6 AM class, the number 34 from Car Collection needs a good points haul to collect the overall championship, and a fine stint by Elmer Grimm has certainly helped. The driver change has cost them a lot of time, more than two minutes longer than any previous pit stop, so now they're trailing down in fourth in class, but there's plenty of time left to catch up. Uh, I go for the second stint and uh, it was very, very good. Uh, the performance of the car was perfect and uh, so uh, I was on the end of the stint uh, first, on the first place. Better? It's not possible. Back in the 24-hour series, from Berlo Racing Team. Kai with his father Marcel have raced here before. This time the team has a new addition and a different car. Yeah, not the LP3 like uh, usually but this time with the Porsche GT3 car, driving together with my dad and my younger brother. So yeah, really special. Well, all of us have a passion for racing and uh, my dad started in racing, then I started in racing and my brother as well. He did uh, a lot of years of karting last year. Now he made the step to, to, to race cars and uh, for him it's a really good experience and it's a great opportunity for all of us to, yeah, to watch racing. This family combination is a dream come true for Marcel. Yeah, it's fantastic, just fantastic. I always said uh, once I hope to drive with my own sons and uh, now we're going to do it today. Technical difficulties have been hindering their race. They've already spent over an hour and a half in the pits and they're back in again. They're last in class at the moment. Let's have a look at the other standings. The car collection number 34 Audi is battling for the championship and after four hours they're leading the race. They've got a 55 second lead over the number 11 Bohemia Energy Ferrari, the number 16 Mercedes AMG GT3 of SPS Automotive Performance, also on the lead lap running in third. The top three in the SPX class are on the same lap. Smart Cars Australia number 51 leading. Their new car is 85 seconds ahead of their customers in the 58 VDS Racing Adventure Team. Speed Lover Porsche number 78 in third. The GT4 class is led by the Fox Motorsport Audi number 47. In second place is the second Mark Cars car, the number 250. The 256 from Gamsis is in third position. Since the 24-hour Endurance Series inception in 2006, Creventic have organised races on unique and special tracks. This one is no exception. We are in le at the legendary circuit, Spa-Francorchamps. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, not the first time for me racing at Spa-Francorchamps, but uh, it's the first 12-hour race for me, so uh, it's a really special one. It's a fantastic track. It's uh, yeah, one of the most beautiful tracks I've, I've raced on. 
Uh, it goes up and down. The sun is shining now. It's really good weather. So it's a nice trek, yeah. I love it. It's just nice to drive, you know. Um, you can drive really precise and uh, that makes it fun. Most drivers have their preferences. Yeah, it's uh, three bands. There's a uh, Radion, the double uh, double gauche, and uh, Blanchiment. That's the turns you you don't see uh, on other tracks all around the world, or the tracks I did at least. If you call yourself a racing driver, this really is a track on which you need to have driven. Everybody knows Spa for sure. Uh, every, everybody, even drivers I'm coaching, they tell me our oh, Spa is just fantastic. It's so much fun. And now I had the experience to do uh, Spa by my own uh, in the GT3 car. It's it's unbelievable. Uh, every time you go down to Rouge, it's just whew, okay. This is tough, uh, but, but it's just amazing and uh, a lot of fun for me, for sure. It is possible to love the track, but hate it too. Uh, the lap times. <laughs> so it's it's a lot of fun to drive here. I like the the the, the Eau Rouge and everything. It's a lot of fun to drive it because it f kind of feels very nice in the car with the aero and everything. But then when you look at the at the lap time, it just doesn't match the feeling. So it's not fun to drive. <laughs> Through the trees of the Ardennes forest, the A6 Pro Ferrari and SP4 Porsche are battling, even though they're two laps apart. The QSR number 94 currently leading the 991 class. This is the first time for me uh, to race at Spa with a cup car. So the speed is a bit, little bit different. So I have to take it a bit carefully and pick up the speed lap after lap. So because I don't want to do any big mistakes and, and crash the car. So it was quite solid. So no, no big problem at all. However, Tommy got himself into a bit of a scare. I was closing up to, to bus stop and I saw I have another cup car in my mirrors and I paid him a little much too attention and checked the mirrors and then I get in the bus stop and I get on the throttle and when I get out and uh, uh, start and finish stretch here and then I hit the throttle a little bit hard. Then I, when I feel the car was turning around, I just go on the throttle harder because I want the car to, to rotate, and it did. So I was ending up with, a, with the front of the car in the right direction. So then I just hit another gear one and then go away. That's one of these mistakes that not should happen, actually. You know, you feel really stupid when you have done it, but you know, what, what can I do? The number 51 is leading the SPX class, but the team wants more. Well, I mean, we expect to finish always because we always like to prepare the cars well and uh, we do good practice. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we would like to get into the top 10 consistently and that's where the winning cars in SPX class should be. Different GT classes and even TCE competitors are driving on the same track at the same time. And this is down to the fact that race organisers emphasise safe racing. This is much appreciated by drivers who are new to the series. Uh, I think everyone is like really fair. <laughs> Normally in overtaking uh, there is no problem and yeah, smart driving I would say. It's a nice championship also. You drive quite a lot. Uh, the qualifying was nice. Uh, yeah, for me it's uh, really good. The respect that drivers have for each other can't prevent every accident, as Angelek found out. I arrived in the, in the bus stop, uh, the last corner. Um, I didn't break too late because I'm always prepared that they don't see me, but I saw uh, that he saw me, but then at the end I didn't have enough space, so I'm very sorry, but I don't think I had enough space. Yeah, we had slight contact going into the bus stop with, uh, actually as it happens, the, the car we're sharing the garage uh, with, which left a little bit of awkward moments, but luckily we both, we both carried on, so neither car seriously damaged. It probably only cost us three, four seconds, so in the general scheme of things, n nothing too much to worry about. Although they share the same pit box, it hasn't caused any animosity. No, no, not at all. They said there was a race incident and they saw that it was not my fault, so not for sure. Uh, the other driver apologised, so it was just one of those incidences, obviously, 12-hour race, a lot of traffic, you know, different speeds of cars, these things happen, and as I say, it didn't end up costing us too much time, so no hard feelings, we're still all friends. Looking at the action, you might think this is a sprint race, 
small mistakes get punished by losing track position as the 34 car collection finds out as the 42 of MDC Sports goes through. Let's Battles see what everywhere. this does to the standing of both halfway. those entries. Pro Sport number 85 has worked itself back into sixth position. Their championship contenders, car collection number 34, now down to third. Taking over in second is the Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha Ferrari, but still leading the SPS Automotive Performance number 16, Mercedes AMG. Bohemia Energy Ferrari number 11, up to second overall, but leading its class in A6 Pro. The Czech team have a two-lap advantage over the MP Motorsport number 19 AMG GT3 in second. Hoffa Racing have an identical car in third position. In SP4, the Manti Racing number 912 is the only competitor. This is the new version of the Porsche for 2019. This is Endurance. Uh, that you do it with a uh, big uh, group, eh, with uh, a lot of uh, mechanicians and uh, two or three or four drivers. You do it together. Team, it's teamwork. And when you're uh, doing a short race, you do it on, on your own. But now it's, you do it together, and that makes it so, no so nice. The 24-hour GT Endurance Series is powered by Hankook but has many other partners that make the races possible. All the data, for instance, is handled by COM1. COM1 provides um, IT services um, all across the world for um, events. Uh, we are specialised in uh, managed services. Um, so basically what we do is um, we provide um, IT connectivity, network connectivity, so Wi-Fi, um, internet, uh, voice over IP, um, broadcast, so video broadcast, um, and that on an ad hoc basis. So what we do is we go to an event, um, and within a few days we build up the whole setup just for the event and then we break down and we go home again. This company is well known in the motorsport world as they supply their services to many race series including Formula One. Yeah, for Formula One we do um, a little bit different uh, setup. Um, we are responsible for the IT uh, for the broadcasters. Um, for example, uh, Ziggo in Holland, RTL Germany. Um, so the network setup they have with them. Um, we control, manage and monitor from our office in Holland during all the races. It was four years ago in Barcelona when Kravendik got in touch with COM1. Barcelona was a known tra uh, track, of course, because of the, uh, the Formula One where we are um, servicing. Um, so uh, we got involved with Creventic um, as they had some issues they wanted to, um, uh, to solve for the IT. They wanted to provide internet to their teams. Um, <clears throat> and of course, not just the, the teams, also the, the host broadcaster here, O221. Um, they need multiple internet services um, as they are, of course, streaming all the video towards the television stations and to YouTube, for example. Um, from there, we got the question if we could do this. Um, and, well, um, we have been doing that ever since. The company is not just here for business, they're also here as motorsport lovers. If you compare this uh, to, uh, for example, Formula One or DTM, um, what I like most about this is the struggle the teams show, the struggle the teams have to actually go beyond that extra step, um, finishing at all. That's, that's really quite amazing to see. It's, it's fascinating seeing all these drivers, all the teams, struggling to, to get the, the car over the, the finish line in the end. So that's, that makes it a lot more interesting to watch than, uh, for, to me, for example, as Formula One. This is the final round of the European leg of the 24-hour GT Endurance Series. It's been great weather. And Spa attracts motorsport lovers from around the area and, of course, those who follow a specific team. There's a new team member in the number one Mercedes, Alex Prince. His wife is watching the screens in the pits. This is the first time they've raced with each other. Yeah, well, uh, before we drove against each other, but not in the same uh, category. So now it's a lot different that we drive together in the same category. And actually, well, it's both-sided. On one side, it's great. It's a great feeling that he's driving for us, driving with us. But on the other side, I was sitting here for more than an hour, uh, biting my fingernails off and being just nervous and nervous and waiting for him to come back into the box. <laughs> The Creventic series attracts drivers of differing experience levels. For some, Spa Francorchamps is their home track. Others have considerably less experience here. It's very, uh, for me, a difficult circuit. The first time, the first time that I drive here, 
and it was even so the first time this year. My last race was in January in, uh, in Dubai. This is a long time between. With around five hours of racing remaining, some of the cars will only have two more driver changes. So teams have some expectation now on their plans towards the finish flag. Finishing the race, only this expectation, because it's harder on this track. The, the race is very hard. The track goes up, down, it's, it's la I like it, but it's hard. The sister car is faring slightly better. The car collection number 33 and VDS number 58 are fighting for position have to give way to the Mantai 912 Porsche. The Pro Speed number 85, meanwhile, still needing to work hard for a chance to win the championship. Well, we're not sitting in a, in a good place. We had started the race this morning with a spin, which put us about half a lap down. I was hit later, which resulted in a spin that put us another about a half a lap down. So now we're struggling to, to regain that lap. We're not running as fast as sometimes we do. I'm not sure if we missed a little bit on the setup. Or if our car is set up a little better, we're hoping for the cool part of the day. So hopefully now the, the track will start coming to our favor and, and help us get a little better lap times. But that's our hope, but we don't know. The points battle in the overall championship is still really tight. In order for uh, the 34 car to improve his standings, he has to win the AM class. In order for us to, to beat him, if he does win that, we have to come in second in class. As far as the 11 car goes, we have to come in fourth in class to, to beat or tie him. With the 11 Ferrari leading, the 85 only has to finish fourth. That should be within the team's grasp. Uh, we're in fifth place right now, <laughs> but closing on fourth, so we hope we can get there. Yeah. Fourth place is a minute and a half away and is in the hands of the other championship hopefuls, car collection and the number 34 car. One of the touring car endurance series competitors has crashed and a long code 60 is needed to recover the 152 BMW and to clear the track. Not all drivers have been helped by driving at a maximum of 60 kilometers an hour. The race uh, was good up to now, but uh, with a lot of 60 cord, and it's dif difficult to go on after a long time of 60 code. And every code 60 means the race engineers have to recalculate their strategy. The discussion is to come in or not to come in because we, we need to do a driver change, but we can only refuel half a tank, so that's not enough. So we have to stay out until code 60 is uh, finished and then we can come in. A lot of teams have decided to use the code 60 to get their fuel and to change drivers. Getting out of the car, Henk de Jong. Yeah, I, I sit uh, near, near two hours in the car and it is uh, a heavy car for me. <laughs> the speed makes the car difficult. He's, he's very fast. And then in the corners, he's, he's, he's a little bit tricky. When you go too, too early on the throttle, then he break out and that makes it uh, difficult. Back to a green flag and the racing is on again. The brand new number 51 Mark car is battling their customers of VDS Racing. The race is going well. Uh, Raphael's actually in front of our car at the moment. We're on about the same lap. Um, I think Raphael's in 13th and uh, we're in 15th and there's about four hours to go. Well, the race uh, so far is, is looking very good. Um, now Christian and Kenev are uh, driving like crazy to uh, get on the overall podium. That's our goal, but it's not looking that good right now. But. We hope. Four hours to go. The number 912 Porsche now fourth overall. That means there's been changes in the standings. The number 11 Bohemia Energy Ferrari leads the race with a lap back to the number 16 SPS Automotive Performance Mercedes AMG in second. The first of the cars on the 151st lap is the Audi number 34 car collection. Championship hopefuls, the 85 from Pro Sport. Another lap down in sixth. That would cost them the championship if the race ended now. In SPX, the two Mark IIs are leading. Two laps between the VDS Racing Adventures number 58 and the number 51 factory team. Speed Lover with their number 78 Porsche are in third. EB Motors lead the 991 class for Porsches. QSR number 94 in second. Third in class, the 64 of Porsche Lorient Racing. There's only four hours to go for the European leg of this season, but there will be another race in the Championship of the Continents. That's in Austin, Texas, at the Circuit of the Americas.
This weekend has seen the publication of the 2019 calendar and it's bigger than ever. Kravendik is now organising even more series. For 2019, there are 14 GT races, 13 for touring cars and 7 for prototypes. The GT and TCE series will be combined for the European Championship in 2019. It all kicks off at the 12 Hours of Mugello in March. A month later, the season continues at the 12 Hours of Spa. The 12 Hours of Brno returns to the calendar in May. Just over a month later, it's early July for the 24 Hours of Portimao. And after the summer break, the season finale is the 24 Hours of Barcelona. In the Championship of the Continents, the results for Portimao and Barcelona are combined with the season opener for the 24-hour series. That's the 24 hours of Dubai in January, of course. And the season finale back at the 24 hours of Cota in November. The Proto Championship has been revamped. The GT cars are also allowed in these races and they're now six hours straight through. Their first race is the six hours of Dubai. Moving to Europe for the six hours of Brno and the six hours of Portimao, the season finishing in the USA with the six hours of Cota. And that's not all. There's a separate 24-hour series Middle East Championship for prototypes, GT and touring cars. That championship kicks off with the six hours of Dubai at the end of January. A week later, it's Abu Dhabi for a four-hour contest. And the longest proto race on the calendar is the 10 hours of Dubai in the second week of February. And there's good news for touring car racing fans as those same weekends There'll be two 30-minute sprint races for the Middle East Touring Car Series that's now organised by Creventic. All of this means that those teams who enter now can have their cars shipped to the Middle East for four race weekends and have them back again in Europe before the bulk of the season starts. All the current information is at the website www.24hgtseries.com. But for now, let's concentrate on this season as we've still to complete the Hankook 12 hours of Spa-Francorchamps, the final race of the 2018 season of the FIA-sanctioned 24-hour GT Endurance Series. Consistency is key in any endurance race. Minutes lost in the pits are hard to make up on track where you can gain a few seconds, but not much more. And sometimes repairing an issue will cost you more time in the pits than you're going to lose on the track due to the issue. The 86 Audi was involved in a minor collision earlier in the race. We had a small contact, so we had, a, we had to check the cars to make sure that, uh, that it was no, no uh, major issue. And uh, when we want to restart, we had no starter anymore. So since uh, I think the last four hours, we had to push the car to, to start it. But uh, so far, car is running uh, without problem. So um, if we have only that for the 12 hours, it should be fine for a old lady like that. <laughs> We're happy, uh, we're happy at least to finish and uh, it was a really last, really last called, uh, last called project and race so uh, we only decided to, to come here on Tuesday with that car so for us uh, to finish it was uh, the best we can do. Avoiding problems is always better as Thomas Krolik proves in the 224 RTR project crossbow. I have seen a white flag and a car uh, on the middle on the track. I made a decision to overtake this car on the left side, uh, but a, a slow car uh, roll to left side too, and I have to push brake, and uh, uh, I got uh, hit uh, to the right side of my car. Drama for Alfred Renard in the 911 Herbert Motorsport Porsche. He's had a bit of luck here, as this part of the circuit has some runoff, so Alfred could steer straight and keep the car under control. He gets the car back to the pits and the destroyed tyre is obvious. Underneath the wheel arch, the team finds damage that could have punctured the tyre. They use race tape to stop it happening again, but it's cost them 10 minutes and four laps on track. Elsewhere in the pit lane, there's plenty of activity with normal pit stops. Tim Muller has just got out of the SPS number 16. <laughs> amazing, amazing, I loved it. I mean, we had some code 60s, so far so good, nothing, nothing serious happened. But the car is, is amazing, it's very neutral, if it starts moving, it's just the back a little bit, you can control it easy, and it's, uh, I mean, it's a great ambience here, great. The car, racing in the A6 AM class, is doing very well. We started from pole, and uh, if I'm not wrong, we still are there, right? You tell me. I, I really don't know, but I think we're still on. 
on first place. Uh, Lance took over now. I think he's going to make a good job. So, uh, cross fingers. Let's do it. But even for those that lead their class, there's no certainty as to their result. Yeah, very unpredictable. I mean, the last race we did was, was Portimao, and we, we literally took the lead of the race probably with about half an hour to go after 24 hours, which is uh, really close racing. And then, again, as you say, like, you know, we're nine hours in and we're still separated to lead two cars on the same lap and, you know, within half a pit stop of each other. So it's a close, exciting race. You know, with the endurance races, it's all about trying to spend as little time in the pits as possible, isn't it? And uh, do as quick a lap time as you can without taking too much risk with the car. So we're, we're currently still fighting for the leader GT4. So there's ours and a BMW close close to go, so close um, by. So with three hours to go, we could still win or second. So it's going to be an exciting race. Ben Klukas with a future competitor. Well, she, I mean, she's obviously going to Formula One, so she, you know, she'll do endurance later on in her life. <laughs> Whilst the young Klukas may not have done Creventic racing just yet, others have just had their first taste of it. It's my first uh, time at the Creventic. It's really nice uh, experience. The, the way of racing, everyone is, it's a good kind of racing. Um, we just had uh, until now some failures with the tyres. So uh, at the end of my double stint, three, three laps before, I had a tire failure in Blanchiment. Uh, so we were a, a bit unlucky and struggling with the tires. It's also hard to drive the car. Still, the Audi is really nice to drive. Uh, we're also, I have to say, struggling a little bit with BOP, but for the rest, it's, uh, I know the team, of course, so it's always, I'm always happy to drive for them and uh, with my colleagues. Earlier, Thomas Krolik managed to avoid an accident by going through the gravel. Half an hour ago, he wasn't quite as lucky and got pushed into the gravel with damage to the car. 30 minutes of repairs and the car is back on track. Damage, uh, uh, our mechanics uh, guys uh, made a very good job. And uh, while uh, 30 minutes, uh, they uh, repair car and we are on the track now. It's now properly dark, ready for the last two hours of racing. But first, a look at the standings, and the lead is nowhere near decided. Just 1.7 seconds between the Ferrari number 11 of Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha and the number 16 Mercedes AMG of SPS Automotive Performance. But don't dismiss Car Collection Motorsport number 34, and they're only two minutes from the lead. The A6 Am cars are giving their A6 Pro colleagues a run for their money. Currently the championship leaders, still the Pro Sport 85 team, but they have to keep up their pace. Third in class might or might not be enough to keep the championship in their hands. In GT4, Mark Cars Australia BMW number 250 is leading. In second, the 47 Audi of Fox Motorsport, now a lap down. Further down the field in third, BMW number 256 of Gamsis Motorsport. This is endurance. When you're uh, like an older M driver as, as I am, you're not so fast, but you can still be quite competitive to, to make the right decision and keep up the speed. And so, yeah, I like to compete and uh, this is a good way to do it. It's full dark in Spa and racing is very different compared to the daytime hours. But all of the drivers do have a little bit of experience. Part of this 12-hour uh, race will be in the dark. So yesterday evening we had a night practice for all teams to get used to the track uh, in the dark as well. The night practice is not optional. It's, no, no, it's, no, it's a, we, you know. It's a, it's a, we it's have a, to, we have to, to we have to drive. Uh, two, 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 two laps. laps, yes. Any driver not completing that minimum will be disqualified, regardless if they are set to drive in darkness or not. So all of the four drivers on our car needs to, to do that because we don't know what's happened tomorrow and maybe, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm hurt, I'm sick, I'm, I don't know. I can't finish the race, but Fred can do that, or another one, we are four, it's very important to do that today. Uh, even, even sick, I wish finish the race. Yes, <laughs> same for me. <laughs> 
Not all of the drivers have the same darkness experience and opinions differ. So I go yesterday uh, in the night practice and it was not so hard. So, and um, I go on the uh, Nordschleife for 24 hours and there it's very dark in the night. So it's not a great problem for me. Yeah, that's very difficult. I did it yesterday evening, but it's very dark here. In, uh, in, in Dubai, you, you drive even so in the dark, but there is more light on the circuit. It's here very, very dark. <laughs> and for me, it was the first time in the night. It was very cool. It's uh, com completely different than uh, when it's uh, light, but it's, yeah, it's very cool. So what makes the difference? Well, you have to pay attention to everyone who is uh, behind you, because you, they have the big lights, so it's difficult to see everything. You just need to pay attention to stay focused and uh, just drive. There are definitely many drivers who look forward to the darkness stints. Uh, with the darkness, I hope that we are going faster than others because we like uh, driving in the dark. So uh, I, I am waiting with happiness the darkness. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's uh, a little bit more challenging. I, I'm doing the next stint, so I'll be finishing the race in the dark. Um, it's going to be a little bit more challenging, particularly here because the, the lights around the track aren't brilliant, so it, it is quite dark out there. So it's tough, especially with some of the GT3 cars coming up in your mirrors, trying to judge distances with the lights. Um, but obviously that's part of endurance racing, it's what makes it fun. 10 hours of racing completed in this Hankook, 12 hours of spa Francochamp. Some of the final results are shaping up a bit, but of course a lot can still happen. On average, a lap here is two and a half minutes, and in the pit stops, and that means about 40 laps still to go. As it stands now, if the race leader retired, they would finish second from last. Maybe that's something the championship leaders need to take to heart. Just normal thing, turned in, turned up the hill, it loaded, um, compressed, bottom, felt like it bottomed out. I don't know if I was offline a little bit or something. Ended up spinning backwards across the thing, brushed the wall, didn't really hurt the car, spun around, got it started, took off again. Had to come in and clean my underwear, and uh, you know it—it uh, it was luck. You know, we, we, you know, did everything I could to try and try and not not uh, damage the car, and the car's fine. So Adam's in now. We'll hopefully finish up. Small actions have major effect, as Nico Verdonk in the 94 QSR Racing School Porsche finds out. We were driving on the track, and uh, there was an uh, object on the track, so we uh, we steered to the left. Do not drive over it, and uh, we touched another car, and the other car went straight in the wall. Um, and our, our rim, left rear, was broken, so... Uh... The 115 Bonk Motorsport Audi racing in the touring car endurance series is damaged to such an extent that the team have to retire, and it must be that time of day, as at the same time, on another part of the track, it's a TCE car that causes a GT entry to hit the wall. Uh, it's unfortunate. Keith's been involved in an accident with one of the TCR cars. Looks like he's come up on a few TCR cars and uh, one of them has run off the road and re-entered and it's just caused a chain reaction. And he's been pushed off onto the grass um, at the high speed uh, last couple of corners there and he's ended up in the fence. So if we had a little bit more time we could fix it but there's only an hour to go in the race now so unfortunately um, yeah, we're not going to be able to do the last hour. In order to clear both accidents and repair the barrier, a long code 60 is needed. 30 minutes at 60 kilometers an hour takes away half an hour of racing. And that could be crucial this late in the race. Because of the 20 minutes code 60, um, we are now third, otherwise we could be first. Okay. As we return to full speed racing, what can we expect for the final hour? Well, it's difficult to say. Of course, as you could see in the last few minutes, we can see big crashes. So, of course, that we hope that we finish the race, which is the biggest expectation. Of course, of course now we are leading, but you never know. In endurance, anything can happen. And even now, when it's exactly 45 minutes till the end, it's like a sprint race. So, really, it's proper full distance race. So, in the end, anything can happen. So, we have to hope that we finish as we are. What would winning the race do for their championship chances? Well, that's not not great for us, I have to say, unfortunately, at the moment. But it's not in our hands. If we, if we win, which I hope we will, that's maximum what we can do for it. And then it depends on luck. But at the moment, it looks like that we should stay on third position. Let's set our sights then on the battle between the 34 of Car Collection 
and the number 85 from Pro Sport. Uh, I think we're still good. We're, you know, right there. It, obviously, it, it, it's got to play out here in the next hour, and uh, we'll see. But right now, we're sitting pretty good. So I think, uh, I think if it, is that right, Charlie? If it finishes now, we're well, the uh, 34 car just regained first place. Okay. Had an issue, so I've got to relook at the points. So it's it's close. Position here, position there. We gotta we gotta see how it plays out. So we'll just keep doing what we're doing and. Again, we've had a great season, so we'll see what ha what happens. The battles are still on in almost all of the classes, but not SP4. Yeah, we were supposed to drive in the class SPX that yesterday evening. They told us that we were, that we had to go in a separate class that's called SP4, and now we are the only car. We are the only car in this class, so it was a nice race for us. The number 912 Porsche is a non-homologated car. However, they're still comparing their performance to the others in the overall standings. We are very happy with the result. We are now on P5, so it looks very good for us. And uh, it looks like the car is very competitive to, uh, compared to the others. So, yeah, we're really happy. 12 hours have now passed since the race started, and it's the Bohemia Energy Ferrari number 11 who set the fastest lap early in the race with a lap of 2 minutes 20.412. 162 laps spent in the lead, including all of the last 31, and now has a full lap gap over the rest of the field as the chequered flag falls. There was a lot of code 60. Uh, but the car was perfect. Uh, I have to say thank you to, to all the staff because the car was really great. Yeah, we, I think we finished third uh, for, I think, one point. But uh, we won many races and we are happy. The number 16 did get closer to the lead, but couldn't challenge in the last part of the race. We had bad luck at the, at the last stop. We tried to do uh, the stop under code 60, but then we had the green flag again, so it was not the best situation for us. It makes it a little bit uh, more complicated at the end, but uh, yeah, let's say the last thing was fun. We enjoyed. The 34 car was close to grabbing the second position too. We had a very big fight with the Lance David. Uh, we had a lot of fun and overall we are P3 now and uh, we have a very good position now. Yes, I, I very pushed and uh, I had a lot of fun. The team, the car worked very good this weekend, so we had a very good round. It's been an exciting conclusion to the European leg of the season and it's given us a varied podium. Three car brands from two classes on the overall podium. The top step claimed by the Czech A6 Pro Team Bohemia Energy Racing, their Ferrari number 11 giving them the win. SPS Automotive Performance number 16 Mercedes second overall, just 18 seconds ahead of Car Collection Motorsport Audi number 34. Quick look at the classes, A6 Pro, Bohemia number 11 win, Hoffer Racing number one second, MP Motorsport number 19 third, in the A6 Arm Class, SPS Automotive Performance number 16 claims the win. Car Collection number 34 second and Pro Sport number 85 third. Manti Racing, of course, take the SP4 class win. The win in SPX goes to VDS Racing Adventures number 58. Speed Lover 78 second and the Mark Cars is third. AB Motors number 73 takes the win in the 991 class. QSR Racing School 94 in second and Laureate Racing third. In GT4, Fox Motorsport wins the class with their number 47, Mark Cars number 252nd and Gamzis Motorsport 256 in third. And after the podium, time for a party where the championship winners were announced. You'll be able to see all of those festivities in our season review coming up around the new year. And don't forget our other show from here at Spa where we look at the action from the Hankook Touring Car Endurance Series 12-hour event. Checkered flag here at Spa Francorchamps marks the end of the European season. But the Championship of the Continent still has one event to go. On the 17th and the 18th of November, the final race of that season is at Austin, Texas. So get to the Circuit of the Americas as a spectator, better still as a participant in the 24 hours of quarter. For more information, the website is 24hgtseries.com. <laughs>